Hi guys and welcome to another Dibley video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've been putting together this little one page scrolling site here. And today we're gonna to be working on our little services section up here. Here's where we left off last time. We've got the full width slider and there's the little about us section. So let's add the services section. I'm gonna enable the visual builder. Once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. There's our last section. I'm going to click on that section, hit the little blue button to add a new one. I'm going to use a regular section for this. First thing I'm going to do is put in a single column in our little row there. I'm going to add a title. Now we saved one to our library last time that we can reuse over and over again. So if we go to the library, and if you're not sure how to do this, just check out that last video. There's the title we saved. I'm gonna go ahead and say, use this module. And there it is, it's popped it in there. I just need to go in there and change that to services. There we go. I think this section, I'm gonna have a different color, but let's add a few modules to it before we decide on that. Now for anybody that didn't Watch the other one. We're using 50 pixels default font there, blue with a bit of text shadow. Great. So let's save that. We'll move on down. Just gonna click on the row. We'll add another row. And here we're gonna put in three columns to add our little services. Obviously you put it in as many or as few as you want. And for our services, I'm gonna use the blurb module again, which is a fantastic little module let you use an icon or an image. Let's just roll down a bit so you can see it. And what we'll do, we'll style the first one and then we'll clone it for the other services once we're happy with the styling. So obviously your title goes up at the top there. Let's say web design. As you can see, it's changed it down there. Content goes down here. I've got no real content. Obviously you would have. And obviously you can align it like any other text box, bold, italicized, make titles and add media if you want to. I'm gonna leave mine just like that. If we roll down a little bit more, we've got image and icon. Well, there's the placeholder image it puts in by default. I'm actually gonna use an icon for mine today. So I'm gonna switch this use icon switch to on. What do you guess? And then you can search for an icon. Well, I'm doing web design, so Let's perhaps have a computer and there's plenty to choose from there. And you can see it right there. Great. Well, if you want to link this module to somewhere, perhaps another section thing is we're doing a one page site or to another page off site, we can do it with a link below and you can link the title and the module separately. The module links are going to anywhere on the module that they click, it will take them there. Title link, they'll have to click on the title for something there. I'm not gonna link these particular modules. I'm just gonna put a little bit of information in each one. So I'm gonna leave these blank. Background wise, well, we've been using blues and purples. So let's make this blue. And as you can see, it's sort of got everything butted up against the sides there. So I like to put a bit of padding around just so it's not quite so cramped looking there. We'll do that in a second, but I think what I'd like too is if when people hover over it, we'd like to have a different color background. And we can do that the same as we did with the button in earlier videos. If we go up to the top, this is common to most Divi modules. Let's just roll down a bit. If you hover over the dark writing up here, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little arrow, we can set a hover state. Desktop state is when the mouse is not on it. We'll keep that as blue. Hover state, let's make that purple. So when they put their mouse on it, it'll change color. When they take the mouse off, it'll go back to our blue there. If you need to change the timing that it takes to go from one to the other, default 300 milliseconds, you can go over to the advanced tab. And again, this is common to all Divi modules. Go down to transitions. There's the default 300. I'm happy with that for this today. But if you want to slow it down, slide it to the right. If you want to speed it up, slide it to the left. Or you can type in a value. Transition delay is if you want their mouse to sit on it for a while before it starts. I don't want any delay, I want it to happen right away. They've got several different speed curves here. 
Ease in out is great for hover. Ease will work. They're all slightly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations. So do check them out. Great. Well, I'm happy with everything on our content tab now. We just need to style this and make it look a little bit better. So let's move over to the design tab. Image and icon. I'm going to make my icon white. I'm not going to have a background color on it. I want it perhaps a little bit smaller than that. So let's take that down a little bit in size. I'm going to take mine down to about 65 pixels I think I used before. Obviously you make yours the size you want. And again you can slide up and down and you can increment, fine tune it with the little arrows on the right hand side there. Yeah that's going to be about right for me. And I want it in the middle, that's good. Rolling on down. If you wanted to you could have a hot hover color on it also by doing the same thing over the color right here. I'm going to leave mine just as white there. And rolling on down. Let's go to our text. Well, I want it all in the middle. So I'm going to hit the text. I'm going to hit middle. You can change them separately in title and body text down below. But I'm going to just flip mine all to light. I'm going to go down to my title text below. You can either go down to there or you can roll over it and hit the little paintbrush. It'll take you straight to it. I think I might make that semi bold just to make it stand out a little bit. And on a background like this, a little bit of text shadow might work too just to lift it off. That's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave mine off. Great. Well, let's move down a little bit more. I'm going to leave the body text just as it is, the default. But as with all things Divi, if you want to change the font, it's got a huge amount of fonts here. Just click on it. Roll over one to audition it. It'll show you an example. Like I say, I'm going to use the default for mine today. And the text color is fine. So let's roll on down. Next, we've got sizing. Well, I'm going to make several of these boxes. And they're going to have different amounts of text in them. But I want all of these boxes to remain the same height. So to do that, I'm actually going to give it a minimum height. Now, minimum height will let it get bigger on other devices but it won't get any smaller than what we set there. So for the minimum height down here, I'm going to say 350 pixels. Just put in the 350, it'll put in the pixels for you. And there is, as you can see, it's given it a bit of height. I'm going to add a bit of padding to separate all this. And if you want to check it on tablet and mobile, and again, this is common to all Divi modules, just roll over the thing that you want to check. Hit the little mobile phone type icon there. You can check it on desktop. I'll move this out of the way. There it is on tablet. And I'm going to add a bit of padding and what have you. And here it is on phone. And you can set different values for each one if you need to. So let's give it a bit of spacing and finish it off. Then we'll check it again. Go back down to where we were. Okay, well, I'm going to close up the sizing. Let's move this back over and go to spacing. I'm going to put perhaps 30 pixels on the top and again just put in the 30 it'll put in the pics for you and maybe 20 left and right and to do the opposite side you can just hit the chain yeah that's a bit more like it I think I'll give it some rounded corners and perhaps a bit of box shadow to take it off the page so if we move down a little bit more here's the border I'm going to give it maybe 10 pics the higher value that you give it the bigger the curve will be up there. Obviously, if you've got the little chain checked in the middle, it's going to do all four corners for you at once. If you take it off, you can get some crazy shapes going by doing different values each side. I've seen this done quite a lot, but it's entirely up to you. I like to have mine fairly uniform, so I'm going to keep mine at, say, 10 picks, which is what I think worked for me last time. Great. Well, I'm not going to put a border on it. If you do, you can put a colored border or whatever, top, bottom, separately. You can do all at once, top, right, bottom, and left separately. Give it a width there. But as I say, I'm happy to leave mine as it is. Of course, you've got border color and the various default styles, dashed, dotted, doubled, etc. Okay, well, let's put a bit of box shadow on there just to lift it off the page. I think I'm going to give this section a bit of colored background just to separate it from the section above but while we're here let's take another look at this on tablet and mobile make sure it's going to work on both 
So I'm going to go back up to safe spacing. It doesn't matter where you go, we'll just have a look at it. Here it is on our desktop, obviously. Here it is on a tablet. Could you use a little bit more padding on the bottom on the tablet, probably? And here it is on a mobile. And again, I think you could perhaps use a little bit of padding on the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'll go back to desktop state and I want to go to the thing that I want to affect, which is padding here. So let's go back to desktop on the padding. And what I'll do, roll down to where we are so you can see what's going on. I'm going to hit the chain and give it the same amount on the bottom there. Now you don't see it on the desktop version here purely because we've given it a fixed height and that's probably slightly more than 30 pixels. But now when we go to tablet, it's got that on there and similar for mobile. Great, well I'm fairly happy with that. So let's save what we've got there and it'll go back to our desktop view. I'm going to duplicate this, say, another five times so we've got six of them, obviously, whatever your services are. To duplicate, simply go in there, click on the module. Two little squares there, it will duplicate it for you. Simply duplicate one, doesn't matter which one you drag over, they're both identical. Duplicate again. And you're going to want to have different texts and different icons. I'll do the first one, then I'll pause the video and do the rest. No point you watching me rinse and repeat. But to go in there, just change it. Hit the little cog. Say maybe content writing. I'll take some of this text away here. And you won't see any height difference when I do that because we've given it a fixed height. As you can see, there's a lot less text, but it stayed the same height there. And of course, I want to change the image and icon, perhaps to a pen. And let's pop that one in. Great. Well, I'll pause this and I'll do the, another four or five of these. So we've got two rows here. OK, there we are. We've got six of them now. And I think, like I say, I'm going to make a different background on this services section. To do that, we need to go up to the actual section itself. So click on the section, little blue tab up here, little cog, and we can go in and add a background color. Now you've got color, gradient, image, background video, background pattern, or background mask. And you can actually combine background colors and images or background gradients and images. And there's some great features here. For instance, I'm just gonna have a color on this, but I will demonstrate blending so if we wanted to put a background image in there, just click on the image, add the image you want. And it's a little bit like our slider we did. There's an image, if that's too much for you, you can blend it with a color. So if we go back to a color, choose whatever color it is you want. Let's just grab a purple for argument's sake. Then click back on the background image itself. Let's just roll this up slightly. You can use a parallax effect if you want just the image to move up and down at a different speed than the rest of the site. Or they've got what they call CSS parallax or fixed background image if you want that image to stay exactly where it is when you roll up and down. But I was going to demonstrate blending the colors here. So you can't use that if you're using parallax. So we'll need to turn the parallax off and then roll down and you've got background image blend down below. Click on it. One I like to use for a lot of these is multiply, and it'll just simply multiply that purple color with the background. You get some fantastic effects there. They really do have some wonderful filters here. Uh, so do take a look through things like saturation. You can get some wonderful effects. And of course, luminosity, I see that a lot that brings everything out. So have a look through if you want to make things really interesting using those filters, but that's a great feature. But we're not actually going to use an image. I just want to use a simple color. I just wanted you to show you how to do that. And of course, you want, once you've got that, you can add a background pattern if you want to. There's polka dots for you. Or you can add a back, background mask if you want to and have it masked out like that. But like I say, I'm going for a simple color. So I'll get rid of that. Get rid of our pattern. We'll get rid of the image. 
And although that's okay, I think I just want a sort of gray color. So simply go to your color, choose something that's close to what you want, or you can hit the little three dots down below. And let's just grab a sort of light gray. That's gonna work for me today. There we go. And I'm happy with that. So let's save our changes. We'll save the page changes, save draft or publish if you're ready, and exit the visual builder. Let's roll on down to where we were working. And there's our little services section right there. And when we roll over one, it's going to change to purple. So there you go, guys. That's how to add a little simple service section using some nice little blow up modules there. Really easy to do. I hope you've enjoyed this today, and if you want to watch the rest of the series in this one page scrolling, have a look down below at that playlist. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.